Welcome back to Centennial Reflections. I'm Rich Carvel, and Tim Dean is sharing uh, his memories of uh, ASU and his work at the Convocation Center with us today. Um, we mentioned briefly your status as, as a student and, of course, a graduate of Arkansas State. So before we talk a little bit more about the Convocation Center, let's go back to your student days here. Uh, favorite professors, favorite faculty members, who are they? Bob Johnson is one that comes to to mind. It was you never knew from day to day what what a what his class was going to hold. But he was um, he was one that always had a great story to tell. And, and what did he teach? Uh, it was it was zo zoology. Zoology. Uh, okay. And um, he he made it you know he made it interesting through the stories that he had with it. And I, I it really enjoyed. It really enjoyed him and his class, but probably enjoyed him as much as the class itself. Well, let's talk about the Convocation Center okay. a little bit more and about the changes uh, that you've seen. One of those changes is coming in uh, uh, the box office and ticket sales. We have, um, since the time I started back, you know, when the, the building actually opened, we. Um, became the central box office for the entire university so that any ticket that was purchased, whether it was for an athletic event, for an event at the Convocation Center that was outside athletics, uh, even other facilities on campus at the time, um, uh, we were doing things for the Wilson Theater. Um, so we you know, became the central box office for, for all events, but everything was hard ticket back then, and then literally meaning that there was a manifest of tickets printed and every seat in the building had a ticket that went with it. Um, of course, technology progresses, and we have since become computerized, and tickets were generated um, for the seat that you purchased, but we're evolving now into pr you know print at home, um, and um, I think we're not too far removed, and they're testing it in, in areas now. But um, you will either do thumbprint or you'll slide a credit card that matches the account or that you, uh, how you purchased your tickets, mm -hmm. or maybe with driver's license, or even um, now possibly to cell phones. Uh, to where that your ticket will come up on there and you'll scan that and that will be used for your admission. So times are changing very rapidly and you know with the technology that's out there. Well with identity theft and, and that sort of thing uh, you've had to put some security measures Absolutely. in place. And we have a, a our, our first real interesting scalping story was back um, we had been I guess three to four years in the building and we had uh, we're doing our second Garth Brooks date that we had had and it was by far the biggest show we had ever had at the time. And uh, it was hard ticket. And the, um, we were, had told people that we were gonna allow them to line up um, at six o'clock the morning and the tickets went on sale. Well, people began, and we had given basically the parameters or perimeter of where they could line up out side the you know the the immediate area of the convocation center and there were literally hundreds of people that lined up along the roads outside well sometime during the early evening um, somebody broke and we just had a, a, a mass of people running into the building I mean it's it's just a wonder that we didn't have somebody you know get hurt fall and you know mm -hmm. but anyway that all worked out people got lined up and the next thing that we know, there's somebody in right at the front of the line that um, began having a seizure. And um, he had somebody with him and um, somebody called an ambulance and uh, you know, you hear it coming in the background. And of course, as people do, people begin to back up a little bit from you know, what's taking place there. And the next thing we know, the guy kind of just disappeared into oblivion. Well, we get through the night, and um, the next morning, then when tickets were due to go on sale, the guy's back in line. You know, poor guy, had the seizure, you know, people let him back in. It ended up all being a front oh, no. um, to move scalpers into line because the people that knew what were going to happen ease their way in in front of these folks that were being gracious and backed up and let you know this guy have some room and the guy that was with him we didn't realize until after the fact had been carrying a blue case with him 
um, looked like a drill case, mm -hmm. you know, small, small drill case. He opened it up and he starts handing these people $20 bills to go in and buy tickets. So it was all a big front that, and I don't know how many people we ended up, you know, before we realized what had, you know, had happened. But there were several people bought tickets to this show and this, this guy's standing there handing the money and it was all, it was all pre-planned. So that was the first <laughs> incident we had with, with scalpers or somebody coming in to try to get tickets in, you know, somewhat of an unethical way. Mm -hmm. Well, you have this huge arena where basketball is, is held, uh, but you've also got other facilities, meeting rooms and, sure. and, uh, and that sort of thing. We've got three meeting rooms that, um, again, stay very busy. Uh, the only thing that we don't like about them is that we don't have more of them. Um, we have uh, more demand than we have space available. And we also have a 280 seat uh, theater space that we use. We've had. Um, weddings in there. We've had, uh, of course, we do recitals. There are a lot of um, presentations that are made. People have different meetings. We've had uh, cadavers in there. Uh, um, the um, uh, funeral directors have done, uh, one in particular had, uh, they had done reconstruction on a face to show how, you know, that you needed to prepare somebody for um, presentation or, or for mm -hmm. them to be buried so you know, we've had obviously a myriad of things here and, and we use them continually I mean we're you know we've got great space the parking is one thing that people you know um, enjoy being able to park pretty close to the doors when they come in for the meetings and, and the easy access so we've uh, you know we've been been very fortunate that we're able to use them as, as much as we do because they stay extremely busy Probably most folks associate athletics with the Convocation Center right. because that's the contact that they sure. have. What's your favorite uh, outside of athletics? The concerts are, are <coughs> certainly the you know my favorite. Um, there's there's so much um, that goes into doing a concert. You know you have uh, the search for the event um, whether and you know and that's something that I mentioned earlier. We don't. Um, Although we are getting more recognition, success somewhat breeds success in that now we're getting more phone calls and we're recognized when we do make the calls to the agencies. But for so many years, we went through the period of time where, you know, you really had to hustle to try to get shows and um, just the, there's, there's a thrill of the hunt and then you know securing it and of course then there's so many things that go into it and then the night of the event there's just that that element of you know you feel a great deal of pride in the fact that you were able to help provide something like that that you know five six seven eight thousand people have enjoyed um, they have no idea and most don't care um, that it's taken three four five six months eight months a year um, for an event like that to come together and you know to be played out in two and a half hours but um, it's, it's, that's the enjoyable part for me. Thank you. Tim Dean, Thank you. Tim has shared some of his memories of Arkansas State University with us on this Centennial Reflections. I'm Rich Carville.